hydrolysis. All right, guys, so you've been hearing your teacher speak about this in class, and I'm going to now explain exactly what hydrolysis is. So the definition of hydrolysis is the following. It is the reaction of a salt with water which changes the pH of the solution. Okay, so it's the reaction of a salt. Where do we get a salt from? Well, remember, when you react an acid and a base, one of the products is always a salt. You know, the, the different reactions we've looked at, acid plus a metal hydroxide gives you a salt and water. Acid plus a metal carbonate gives you a salt, water, carbon dioxide. There was always a salt. So that's where the salt comes from. Now that salt sometimes will actually react with water. And that's what we're going to look at. So to be able to understand this, you need to know which acids and bases are strong and weak. That is very important, okay? So I'll keep mentioning it during this lesson, but you just remember that there is no way to tell if something is strong or weak without memorizing it. That's literally the way to do it. So let's start. Let's say we take HCl and NaOH. Now, that is an acid and a metal hydroxide. So we know that that always gives us a salt and water. What I want you to now do is you take the salt. So you take the salt, which is NaCl, and I want you to break the salt up into its ions. So that would be Na plus, and that would be Cl minus. Now what you do is you examine the Na plus, and you try to ask yourself, where did that come from? Did it come from HCl or did it come from NaOH? We can say that it comes from NaOH. Now, is NaOH strong or weak? So we go back to our little table and we go to NaOH and we see, oh, it is strong. So we can say here, NaOH is strong. So because it is strong, we say hydrolysis will not happen. Okay, so you don't have to worry about hydrolysis. Next, we go on to Cl minus. Now, where did that come from? It comes from uh, HCl. Okay, so it comes from HCl. It can only come from this one or this one. Then we go back to our table and we realize that HCl is strong. So we can say HCl is strong, therefore hydrolysis will not happen. Hydrolysis only happens when something comes from a weak base or a weak acid. So if you had to do a titration with HCl and NaOH, so let's make a little summary here, therefore if you do a titration with NaOH and HCl, no hydrolysis takes place. So therefore, the pH will be equal to 7. Or let's rather say pH at the end of the reaction, at the end of reaction will be equal to 7. Right, so here's another example. So this is an acid plus ammonia. Now you should know from the previous lessons where we've spoken about the common types of reactions, you should know that this gives you a salt. And that salt will be NH4Cl. It doesn't give you water or anything like that. So what you do now is you look at the salt and you break that salt up into its ions. So let's quickly see here. So the salt is NH4Cl. Now break it up into its ions, NH4 plus and Cl negative. Then you look at the NH4 and you ask yourself, where did that come from? Did it come from HCl or did it come from NH3? It came from NH3. So we can say it comes from NH3. Then if we look at our table, we can see that NH3 is weak. So we can say that NH3 
is a weak base. Therefore, hydrolysis will happen. And I'm going to show you what that actually looks like now. Hydrolysis will happen. Awesome stuff, guys. You excited to see what hydrolysis actually is? I'm going to show you that now. Let's quickly look at uh, Cl minus. Cl minus comes from HCl. We saw in the previous question that that is a strong acid. HCl is strong. And so hydrolysis will not happen over there. All right, so what is hydrolysis actually? Can you remember that video I showed you guys where you had the one boy sitting in the car and he was super unhappy to go to school? And then I showed you after that there were those kids who were busy dancing. And in that video I explained what a strong and a weak substance actually is. So can you remember that the weak substance is the one that does not want to react? So this NH3 is weak. So it doesn't want to react. So it doesn't actually want to go in this direction. It rather wants to behave as a NH3. So what happens now is that this NH4 is feeling a little bit uncomfortable because it would rather prefer to be NH3. So it's going to try go and become NH3 again. How does it do that? It is going to react with water. We said in the beginning of this lesson that a hydrolysis is the reaction of a salt with water. So it's very easy. You take NH4+, plus, you react it with water. We know that the product will be NH3. And then you've got to try to figure out what the other product will be by looking at it very carefully. How did this NH4 turn into NH3? Did it give away a hydrogen or did it accept another hydrogen? It gave a hydrogen away. That's why it now has three hydrogens. Who did it give it to? The water, of course. And so that will become H3O positive. That is hydrolysis. Now it gets more interesting. We know that H3O plus is something that acids produce. That's something that acids produce, so it makes the pH go down. And we know that if you produce OH minus, that is something that bases do, and that makes pH go up. So what are we doing in this process? We are producing H3O plus. So we are going to make the pH go down. So we can say that if you do a titration with HCl and NH3, the pH should be less than 7, will be smaller than 7. Because in the hydrolysis reaction that takes place, we are going to produce more H3O+, and that makes the pH go down, because that's something that acids do. Now check this out, guys. I want to show you something else. Can you see that we have a weak acid, I mean a strong acid, my bad, a strong acid plus a weak base, then the pH will be less than 7, which is like saying more acidic. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes perfect sense. If you take a strong acid and you react it with a weak base, the acid is going to be the more dominant character, and so we're going to get a pH less than 7 at the end. That makes sense. In the previous example, if you take a strong acid and a strong base, so a strong acid plus a strong base, then it makes sense that the pH will be equal to 7 because they balance out. This is all during a titration, of course. Now let's do another example. So now we have an acid plus a metal hydroxide. So we know that that always gives us a salt. plus water. Then for hydrolysis, or to be able to identify hydrolysis, you look at the salt, which is the NaCH3COO, and you break that up into its building blocks. Then you look and see where did it come from. So if you look at this Na+, it obviously came from NaOH. So I'm going to say here, comes from NaOH. Now, NaOH, we already saw, is strong. And so therefore, hydrolysis will not happen over there. Now, let's have a look at the CH3COO minus. That comes from 
this one over here, CH3, or it's ethanoic acid, CH3C00H. Um, comes from CH3C00H. Um, now, if you look at that, that is ethanoic acid, which is weak. It's a weak acid. Yeah, CH3COOH is a weak acid. So what does that mean? Hydrolysis will take place. It will happen. How does it take place? Well, what it means is that it means that this CH3COO over there is not feeling very comfortable. It's going to try and go back and become CH3COOH. How does it do that? It reacts with water. So the hydrolysis reaction will look like this. It will react with water and we know that it's going to become CH3COOH. Now you've got to look carefully. Did the water molecule give a hydrogen or did the water molecule accept a hydrogen? Well, well done if you can see that it gave a hydrogen. It gave a hydrogen. So that means the water molecule is now OH minus. So look at this, guys. We are producing OH minus. Now that is something that bases do. And so the pH is going to go up. We can say that the OH minus concentration is increasing. And so therefore, that's something that bases do. And so the pH is actually going to go up. So therefore, if you do a titration, with CH3COOH and NaOH, then the pH will be larger than 7. And it makes perfect sense. We've got a weak acid plus a strong base then that means that the pH will be larger than 7. And that's something that bases do. So it makes sense. The, if you've got a weak acid and a strong base, the strong base will dominate. And so your pH at the end will be larger than 7. And then lastly, we are going to react these two together. So we know that if you take an acid and a ammonia, you make an ammonium salt or ammonium salt. Yeah. I said that twice. <laughs> so it's going to be NH4CH3COO. So what you do for hydrolysis is you take that salt, you break it up into its building blocks, which is NH4 positive and CH3COO minus. Then you see where they came from. So we know that this one, NH4 plus, comes from, it obviously comes from NH3. Now, NH3 is weak, so hydrolysis will take place. Great, let's look at the next one. So we know that this one comes from the ethanoic acid, which is this part over here. We know that that is weak. So hydrolysis will take place for this one as well. So we're going to have two sets of hydrolysis reactions taking place. So we know that this thing is going to react with water and it's going to try to go back to what it was in the beginning, which is NH3. So can you see that a hydrogen is going to be given to the H2O molecule? So the H2O molecule should become H3O+. Now, can you see we are producing H3O+, which makes the pH go down because that's more acidic. So therefore, pH will drop because we are making more H3O+. Now let's look at this one over here. So now what we have is this one is going to react with water. It's always water, hey? And that's going to try to go back to what it was originally, which is this one over here. And now you've got to look carefully. Can you see that this water molecule gave the hydrogen away? So the water molecule will now become an OH- minus. And we know that that is something that bases do. And so that is going to make the pH, it's actually going to make the pH go up. Therefore, pH will rise. So we've got a pH dropping and we've got a pH rising. So what does that mean? If you look at the overall effect, the pH will remain at 7. Therefore, pH will be equal to 7. So this makes sense because if you take a weak acid 
plus a weak base, then they're just going to cancel each other out. And so the overall pH will just be equal to 7. Now, why is this important? It is important because of the following. If you do a titration in real life, so let's say if you do a titration with a strong acid plus a strong base, what would the pH be at the neutralization point? Well, we know that the pH would be somewhere around 7. But now when you do a titration in real life, how do you know when it is complete? It is complete when the color changes or the indicator changes color, right? So you need to make sure that you are using the correct pH indicator. Because you get three different or three main types, there are others, but we know that there is an indicator called methyl orange, which changes pH at about there. Then you get bromothymol blue, which changes pH over there. And then you get, ph uh, oh, that word, eh? Phenophthalene, whatever it is, <laughs> which um, changes pH over there. So if you take a strong acid, I'm just, I'm just going to say SA for strong acid, plus a strong base, then we know that the pH changes at about 7. So it would make sense that you use bromothymol blue for that type of... Um, so use bromothymol blue. If you take a weak acid plus a strong base, then the base is going to dominate. Now bases have a high pH. So your pH will be somewhere around like 9, I guess. So then you would use phenon... Oh my goodness. Phenophthalene. Okay, and then of course, if you take something like a strong acid and a weak base, then the acid is going to dominate. So your pH would change at around, I don't know, four. So then you would use methyl orange. Makes sense, right? So in summary, what we've learned today is that if you take a strong acid and a strong base, the pH will be about seven. If you take a strong acid and a weak base, the pH will be, um, the acid will dominate. Now acids have a low pH, so your pH will be somewhere, or let's just say less than seven, um, less than seven. Um, if you take a weak acid and, and a, oh, and let me just quickly add, then you would use methyl orange. Here you would typically use bromothymol blue. And then if you take a weak acid and a strong base, then the base would dominate. So then your pH would be more than 7. So you would use an indicator that, has a, that changes at a pH higher than 7, and that would be that horrible word. Okay, and then if you take a weak acid and a weak base, remember that that causes the pH to be around 7, and so then you could use bromothymol blue again.